Let's see if we're live. Are we live? We're live. All right. Hey, so you saw like seven seconds of craziness. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Easter uh, from our family to yours. And welcome to a special edition of Coffee and Conversation. So look, we, we have matching. We finally get to use our matching Mr. and Mrs. Mugs together. Yay. It doesn't ever happen. So uh, happy Easter to you and your family. Good morning to Coffee and Conversation. Thank you, Adam Waite from Florida for giving us these beautiful mugs for our 25th anniversary recently. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's good to be with you all and uh, to have this opportunity to celebrate uh, Easter time together. We are, uh, so we're using Facebook Live today. We wanted to see if it gives us um, a better visibility. Uh, it could be a disaster, we don't know, but we figured what more merciful time than Easter Sunday to go ahead and try something new. So um, it is good to be with our uh, Coffee and Conversation family. Amy and I were talking last night just about how, um, so the plan is, just so that you know, uh, I can't do this every day. <laughs> I've realized that as much as I would love to uh, prepare uh, something every day and do something every day, that life does need to return back to normal a little bit for me. So we're actually going to start doing coffee and conversation two days a week uh, and then once on the weekends. Uh, so we'll have Monday and Thursday that we'll offer coffee and conversation. And then on Sundays, I'll be doing a special gospel reflection related to that, and we'll still be community and have uh, live chat about that as well. Um, so next week, I will do all day uh, or every day, uh, except tomorrow, Monday, I'm taking off. Uh, but Tuesday through uh, Sunday next week, uh, we will be live at our normal times for coffee and conversation, and then beginning the 20th. Uh, we will start our new schedule for coffee and conversation. So anyway, good morning to all of you, and uh, it is Easter Sunday. Um, Amy, tell them what Easter Sunday means to you, because uh, I forgot my prop. <laughs> <laughs> what Easter Sunday means to me, uh, well, it means family. It means um, taking a deep breath. Um, when you're in ministry, uh, Holy Week is uh, somewhat of a marathon um, of emotion and, um, you know, you run the gamut of uh, joy and, and some peace and then there's anticipation and then there's sadness and, um, you know, then there's sort of that devastation and that emptiness that you feel and then, uh, you know, we get to Easter Sunday and it's, joy again so Can you tell that amy works in the church <laughs> she, she <laughs> no, described what it is it's a roller coaster of emotion you know for on so many levels it, yeah. it really is if we're really experiencing each mass the way the way it so is. here's my prop and i wanted to do this at the beginning before like we get into the serious stuff but oh people always talk about this and we know <laughs> that he is risen and so we watch him rise we watch him come from the ashes <laughs> And we watch him rise through eternity. Oh, he's going in front of Amy's face. So you know that if you've been baking, that indeed he has risen. Uh, yeah. All right. Wow. Anyway. You can tell we're in the coronavirus era. Yeah. We, uh, sorry, I didn't comb my hair yet. Um, so we're, we try to be a little bit brighter and uh, hopefully a little bit more cheery today. Uh, not more cheery in, in personality, but in clothing, just to say that, you know, this is kind of our reminder. Um, so here's my question for you. We're going to talk uh, just for a little bit about traditions and hope and joy. And I want to know some of your favorite memories or traditions uh, that you've celebrated uh, during Easter. Uh, you know, mine as a kid was, and I don't have it this year, I told my brothers that I will wait till we all come out of quarantine and can be together. But um, in, in our Polish household, we always had beet horseradish. That was like our favorite thing that we put on everything. And, uh, you know, it's kind of sweet and, and salty and soury at the same time, but it just, that is Easter. I can't eat it any other time of the year except on Easter. And last night I'm thinking like, holy Toledo, like, is it really gonna be Easter? And then the ministry side of me kicked in and it was like, yeah, well, Jesus has risen. So yes, Greg, it will be Easter, despite you not having your beet horseradish. 
Um, but we did things last night, like we colored some eggs, mm -hmm. and uh, even though they don't make the egg dye that they did when I was a kid, probably because it was toxic, but hey, it made great eggs, and they, they should still do that. Um, but there, there's so much that we all celebrate together, so please share some of your favorite uh, traditions. Amy, we're live. I know that you're watching. You're trying to... I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to respond and interact with people. So this is what Amy looks like behind the scenes, that she's <laughs> I'm trying to do messages. my producer hat and my... Um, okay. But yeah, so we, uh, we all have these things that make holidays, and especially Easter, special to us. Um, you love watching the kids open up Easter baskets. Mm -hmm. Finding them. We still make them find them. They're they're almost eighteen and now twenty. So we but, don't. What? The Easter Bunny makes them find them. Well, yes, the Easter Bunny still hides them. <laughs> That's why I work alone sometimes. No, but um, yeah. So we have these traditions, and we do. We we've loved like so many different parts of watching the kids grow up and um, just experiencing the joy. And I, and I think that that's what Easter is. You know, Christmas has gotten commercialized to the point that um, it's just a little bit different. Nothing different than what we experience as kids, but uh, a lot of the faith-based perspective of it uh, is not focused on as much. But I think Easter still has that despite the bunnies and the commercialism and the eggs. I think so. I guess it's what you make of it, right? So whatever your traditions are in your house and the things that you do with your family um, can be as commercialized or non-commercialized as you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> I just like to put her on the spot. Is so let so let's talk about the the faith based perspective that brings about this uh, joy. Um, you know, we we've talked about if you've been with us the last few days, especially during Holy Week, we talked about everything emotionally that would lead up to this, uh, everything that would lead up to this point, and what maybe what the disciples felt, and what we would feel, and how it relates to our lives. And somebody made a comment yesterday on the show when I asked about what was one of the um, struggles or the aspects of waiting during this time. And they said that nothing will ever be the same. And this morning when I woke up, that thought came back to my mind um, that the disciples, when they got to the tomb and Jesus was gone, and those that began to remember about what Jesus had talked about and what they had experienced, in that moment of life, this was the second time in two days that they would realize life would never be the same. Good Friday, they felt life would never be the same because yeah. devastation. Now, life would never be the same because of the rising of Christ. And this is to me, I don't know about you, but at least for me, like I'm trying to use this as a new year. Like there's a lot of things that I need to reset. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to start working out again last week, two days, and then I fell apart. I can't do that. I have to stay with it. So we need to figure out a way that I stay accountable to you and then maybe that'll that'll set. But I, I think that I don't know, for me, Easter, especially if you work in the church, uh, we, have, we see it from a, a different perspective. Um, it's about action and it's about creating this immersion experience for other people to be enveloped by the rising of Christ in the liturgy or in the worship mass. Mm -hmm. uh, so we reflect differently, usually after Easter, um, or have our moment during mass. That's when it finally allows you to catch up when you're silent in mass and, and we didn't have that this year mm -hmm. um so i don't know i kind of think that i just need this moment of new year to reset my prayer life to reset um 
what makes me healthy and holy and mm-hmm. um, a good father. I, I mean, a lot of the things have gone to the wayside because of busyness. But. That's true. That's true. That's the hope um, that during this time of being quarantined and, um, you know, it's ironic, I feel like, or maybe not ironic, maybe it's a God thing, but that we have found ourselves in the situation of being isolated at least uh, during the time of Lent when it's supposed to be you know all of us in the desert and mm-hmm. you know um, we always are trying to find more silence in Lent and find more connection and whatever and and this coronavirus quarantine has caused us to be more um, to be more insightful and forced us to be quiet and and maybe find some um, new new habits uh, slow down Uh, you hear people talk about that all the time now is that it's forced us to slow the pace that life had set for us down and so that's the hope and Amy works at our home parish and you know and and it's refreshing and eye opening to see the number of people that depend on their church family in order to help provide them different experiences of faith you know that for them to just be near the building for them to come for an easter food blessing in the parking lot or for them to be present um, for drive-by palms Um, or we gave away uh, the ministry as part of the food drive at our local parish gave away a hundred copies of finding jesus in the eucharist to those who brought food to those in need because we wanted them to be reminded of what this is really about and that's what Jesus does during Easter so all of the preparation everything that we do as much as Jesus is reminding you and I what it's all about by refocusing on hope and saying I know you are in a lot of pain but the hope is now real and the hope is wonderful and the hope is going to inspire you and ignite you that this is the same way that the disciples would have felt at the same time like all of this pain now they're not going to see jesus well in our time they're not going to see jesus for another week uh well two uh because he's going to send the holy spirit first uh, i don't know exactly in scripture what the time period is before he appears but they know that he's risen because they go back to the things that they've heard and so this time of hope and joy for you and I allows us to see what's possible to see everything to fulfillment and to have the opportunity um, to grow even deeper you got anything good on there uh, that's what I was looking for <laughs> <laughs> you're right it's hard to read quickly when you're uh, all right I'll family. let you read you tell me what you have okay. um, well, what are you looking for? I don't know. Do we have any traditions on there? Oh, dressing up, going to church. Um, uh, there was a... I'm taking tomorrow off to figure out how to use this part. Because normally <laughs> with my other program, I can see all the other comments on the screen. Uh, I'm afraid to go off of the screen that I'm on because I don't want to lose you. <laughs> so this is usually what Amy does in the background. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait a second, you commented lemon water? <laughs> Libby asked me what I was drinking. Uh, my mom makes a lamb-shaped cake and lamb-shaped butter. That's Okay, Carolyn, I have to ask, does your mother's lamb, butter, and cake actually look like a lamb? Because whenever I've made it, if you've ever seen like um, the animated uh, short Bounden, where the sheep has all its uh, fur sheared off and it has a giant head with floppy ears, that is how my cake and my butter <laughs> have come out for the years. But true uh, artists of love and tradition make a lamb cake that even down to the detail of the fluffiness of the frosting and the jelly bean eyes and raisin nose uh, know how to do that. So yes, I think that that's for a lot of us. That I saw that on Facebook yesterday and I was like, oh, we didn't get a lamb butter. Mm-mm. No, I couldn't find one. I usually buy it because we don't make it very well. <laughs> I don't know what y'all are hoarding out there, but I got to tell you, you all buy up some weird stuff. 
I need a new webcam. I didn't even think about this the other day. I need a new webcam because uh, for our studio, we're doing some different stuff. Every webcam is sold out. Every single one. You can't even find the adapters to make a real camera into a webcam. They're all gone. I'm like, at what point did we become hoarding? And the newest thing that I just read yesterday, biggest thing that's being hoarded right now, newest thing that you're not <laughs> going to be able to find after <laughs> toilet paper and whatever the second thing was, uh, tell them. Hair dye. Women's Ladies. hair dye. Oop, whatever side that is. Hair dye. Women's hair dye flying off the shelves. Yep. You got a touch of gray going on? You better pick it up. You buy 50 of them and then mark it up by 300%. <laughs> uh, we've got going to parents' house. Sabrina, uh, Selena said that we always gathered at my parents' house, Sunday mass, dressing up, eating good food, everybody making it. We always shop, and my youngest always throws her Easter dress on. All right, so that that's a good point. Um, if you're not going to your family's house today, uh, as you shouldn't be, um, <laughs> I don't know anything. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but if if you're not going to your family's house today and you're not going to see the ones that you normally get to spend a day like this with, how do you fill that void? What are you doing to still make it special? Um, mm -hmm. I can't give you all my surprises because other people I know might be watching uh, things that we're doing. But, um, yeah, like what are you going to do to still make it seem like the gathering that you're used to easter egg hunt yes sonia we mm -hmm. uh we used to have two of them one in the morning with just our kids and then my dad would come over later in the day and uh that was you know those always had a little bit more uh better prizes in them mm -hmm. so, yeah they had cash yeah ours had like tootsie rolls but they had cash <laughs> Yeah, dressing up for church seems to be a big uh, Carolyn, one your thing. mom was uh, a cake decorator. Yeah, you you share those pictures. Would it have been better if you'd have been like, my mother never made a cake in her entire life, but during Easter, it was like God's grace filled her to make the masterpiece <laughs> of the most wonderful cake. But now we know the secret. Um, Zoom dinner. Somebody said Zoom dinner. This is a new tradition, right? Yeah. Zoom dinner. Yeah. <clears throat> Trying to get the family together in a new way. And Becky Krakowski, <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. Polska, my Polish sister, yes, uh, ham and kielbasa for dinner. Uh, we have to have two different types of kielbasa. We have the, the smoked and the regular. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a way that you cook it that's special where you boil it and bake it, so it has to be just like my mom would make. Uh, to my mom and dad, who I won't see today, I love you. My mom's out in California still, and so my California family is uh, taking care of her. But, yeah, you know, that, that ham... Uh, that wasn't in short supply. They had a lot of ham, and it was on sale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something that I did yesterday for the first time that was so much fun is that my sister-in-law, Stacy, and I got together with our daughters, the cousins, Natalie and Audrey, and we um, did a FaceTime making Easter sweetbread. And I've never made it. Stacy always makes it every year, thank goodness. She uh, got Greg's mom's recipe. And uh, so we over FaceTime, stood in our kitchens, and she showed me what to do and led me through the steps, uh, even though we forgot a few things still along the way. We got talking a little too much and missed some things, but um, it was, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, um, so that was kind of fun. It was something different. The girls were laughing the whole time. They always laugh, and, and we love their laugh, so it was really fun to um, be able to do that uh, together still, but yet uh, separately, so. But in, in the tradition of my world, and Stacy did this for a while, I don't know if she still does it, but my grandmother, and I don't know if any of you had ancestors that did this, but my grandmother baked our sweet bread in a coffee can. So she would take the metal coffee container and she would line it with Crisco, and that was what she filled up the sweet bread halfway so that it would rise and so when it came out, we had circular sweet bread. That was the way that huh. my grand You've been married to me 25 years. You've heard this story before. Uh, well, I know, but I'm just I'm just listening. It's I can't imagine. <laughs> I still can't picture how you bake in a coffee I'm doing can. it. Folgers, 
I don't buy you, but I will for this. No, they sell everything in plastic now. <laughs> they don't, they don't make be, coffee cans, be I don't very, think. very uh, moldable. We'll have to look. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, somebody's doing a car line at for their grandparents. Aww. They're going to sit outside their Who's home. Doing that? Uh, that is Selena. Selena. Nice. Yeah, they're going to sit at their home and dropping off a little small gift and sending them love from a distance. So that's pretty cool. Ooh, confetti eggs, Marilyn said. Mm-hmm. And Becky said, see, bread in a coffee can. I haven't had that in years. <laughs> Becky, next Easter, we are doing it together. I don't have time to go to the store this year. We but might have to. Let's make our pact. Okay. I'm so. glad that we made that pact. Okay. So, um... We could talk all day long, but I'm sure that you have many things to do this Easter morning, um, or probably not. But, um, you know, to be able to start the day together and to just be reminded, that's hope. You know, to be reminded about what, uh, what made us whole when we were young. Christ is always calling us to live with this childlike faith. Um, and I was watching a preacher this morning who was just talking about the prophets and about how all of their um, their words and their preaching, despite all the crazy stuff that they were asked to do while uh, sharing God's word, that the prophets, everything that they said came to fulfillment. And Jesus was the same way, that everything that he said came to fulfillment despite people not understanding what he meant. And I think that in a way, for me, that the traditions that we set forth when our children are young or when we were children and we were young to remember these things 40 50 60 years later um i didn't look at you because i said 60 years later amy is not 60 i promise you but um who even went there why did you go there i was just i knew what was going to happen when the camera was <laughs> off um but these traditions that we set forth they remind us and they take us back to this moment to realize what our loved ones were trying to do for us. They were trying to give us something that we couldn't appreciate in the moment, but that we would ultimately appreciate when the time came and we opened it up and we were willing to see it for what it was. Um, and to be able, 40 years later in my case, to say to Becky, do you remember cooking sweet bread in a coffee can to say yes? like. That is a neat connection, and we all have these stories, and, you, and you're all inspiring me with different things that you're doing today, but keep the traditions alive just because they can't be done. If you don't have kids anymore, but you love to dye Easter eggs, take out a half a dozen eggs and dye them. If you remember your grandmother's recipe, but you haven't had it in years because you didn't know how to make it, think about it. Find a base recipe and screw it up till you get it right. I mean... Just don't share the good stuff with people you like and t like take it to the neighbors you don't talk to. Like, <laughs> hey, I made this bread for you. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> uh, so if you're just joining us on Coffee and Conversation. Hi, Joan Marie. Uh, it is good to see all of you. It's good to be with you and to just share uh, time smiling during Easter, uh, celebrating the hope and talking about traditions and maybe, maybe even new ones that you've started. You know, that would be another one that I would ask. Is is there anybody that's had any traditions that you started uh, that you didn't have as a kid, um, but you started? I, I mean, I don't know. Is it a tradition? I guess it is in your own family if you started, but just yeah. something that you think is neat. Do, do we do anything like that? Well, we watch um, we watch. Oh, we watch movies. Joshua last yeah, night. Yeah, we watch movies. We're a big movie family. Um, and we watched Joshua last night. If you've never seen it, it's really, um, it's really a neat story. I remember when I first got it and the kids were young, you know, probably like, I don't know, six and eight or something like that. And I got this movie. I didn't even really know what it was about, but it seemed interesting and, um, happened to watch it at Easter time. And, uh, well, I, I don't want to give away the end, but I, all of a sudden I realized it was like sort of an, a, an Easter, somewhat of an Easter story, um, and it was pretty cool. And so um, we've watched it every year, and um, we've also watched when the kids got older, uh, we watched Passion of the Christ um, to really try to help um, help us identify. Tonight we're going to watch Risen for the first time. I haven't seen it yet. I've never um, seen that one. I like when people think that I'm in ministry, so I've read every book. 
of Christianity where I've seen like every movie so I know there's people like right now like he's never seen Risen but yeah no like I hadn't um but yeah the movie uh Joshua uh we watched it last night and and it was about looking for things that we've never seen before Mm -hmm. and and we did find some we found some really neat uh aspects in watching that movie it's kind of like if you watch the television show This Is Us um it's our Police Academy 3 uh (laughs) during uh Thanksgiving if you get that joke, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, uh, you should be watching This Is Us because it's the best show on television. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Carrie said making empty tomb cookies. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. those. I, we did that. Um, you I was, messed that up when you I did mess it up. I didn't do it very <laughs> well. But I have the recipe, and I remember thinking last night, I was reading through it, and I thought, oh, the kids aren't, now that they're older, are probably not going to really want to do that. So I thought, I need to hang on to this recipe for my potential grandchildren and maybe we will do it right then <laughs> yeah somebody made a resurrection cool. cake yesterday i think i saw oh jesus christ superstar with john legend is on tonight all right there yeah. you go there's something good morning eric how are you good to see you i'm glad my you're brother eric wardrum beautiful ministry catholic cross bearers national ministry they get on their bikes and not like 10 speeds, like real bikes. These are, <laughs> these are my tough brothers. But uh, good to see you this morning. Thank you for everything that you do to share the message of Christ with your uh, family and, and friends in the world, really. Yeah. Hi, Maureen. Good to see you. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, if you've started a new tradition, maybe there's a movie you haven't seen. Uh, maybe there's an old recipe that you really uh, butchered in the past, but now you're going to try it again. You got the time. <laughs> Go ahead and do it, and uh, I think we'll all be celebrating Easter again, uh, probably in the next two months when we rise from our own Mm -hmm. tombs, and uh, and actually be able to have some of these traditional things. Because one of the things that I really have figured out, and I think people are figuring this out. I had this debate. We talked about it yesterday about that. I think people will come back to church because there's something missing. So. I don't know how long they'll stay. That's going to be up to the churches. But the other thing that I also think is that people are going to appreciate extended family more. Um, We take for granted if we have extended family that's near us and we gather for holidays or we gather for Sunday meals um, or we just get to see them whenever we want or talk to them whenever we want. I think a situation like this is going to help us realize that that may not always be there and that there is something beautiful that fuels us and feeds us and allows us to feel um, whatever you want to call it, the presence of God or at peace or comfort. Um, But I really do think that we will begin to once again bring the domestic family back together. And and I smile because, uh, as many of you know, I'm on tour uh, with my friend Carrie Ford Uh, from Buffalo and we're doing a tour called Restore and it's all about helping families get back to the point where they can restore family values and come back together and God placed this on my heart about two years ago and uh, obviously we're not on tour right now hopefully we'll start again with our events in the fall but anywhere that wants to bring us in we're going despite funds just I mean we're just going because this is what people need but I love that God started this two years ago in my mind called me to commit to it nine months ago with my heart and then we moved into action for a time that he knew would exist and I believe it is going to be one of the biggest things that I've ever done in my life because we've already seen the way that it's changed families that have been part of it and I can't wait to see what it's going to do to help restore the families after this moment. I was just going to say, I mean, I think restore is so uh, so appropriate. It's not going to be what maybe you thought it was going to mean uh, in the beginning. No. Um, because after, after we get out of all of this and are able to go back to um, being together and congregating, and I, I really think restore is going to mean something a little bit different. And um, so I'm really excited to see it grow and, and see... Yeah. People receive it. And don't forget that on uh, Tuesday night, um, why is that thing like that? I don't know. Uh, it's a little. Um, on Tuesday night, 
There you go. Just put it right in front of there. him. <laughs> <laughs> On Tuesday night, uh, I'm doing a live event at 7 o'clock p.m. I'd love for you to be able to gather with your friends or your family or, or anybody that needs it. Um, but it's called Taking the Next Step, and it's really just about what do we do next? We've identified that we have to start back to a normal but we're still not there. So what does it mean to take the next step and how do we go ahead and make that uh, part of our lives in, in, in every single way? So that'll be Tuesday night. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Eric was talking about uh, potato salad, smoked fresh kielbasa. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. And Dottie's, Dottie's looking forward to uh, seeing you at OLSH in October for Restore. We will so. be in Buffalo in October. Yay! Carrie says If we're yes. still quarantined in October, we're going to need a lot more than Restore. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so my coffee's getting cold, which means that we've been on a long time. And uh, that's kind of how I judge when the show ends. When the coffee starts to no longer be hot. Um, but yeah, a happy Easter to you. I pray that your family um, knows how bless what a blessing you are. I pray that your family knows what a blessing you are to them because you take moments and you take opportunities to spend to try to grow in who you are in faith and as a person. And not everyone does that. And so the fact that you're here with us uh, each morning makes it special. And the fact that you're willing to share that message long after you leave here uh, means even more uh, because I don't do this for me um, I do this because this is a way that we can all be together and grow in faith we're making Bob hungry by talking about all this food <laughs> Bob's getting hungry and Jason says hello Greg it's been a long time Jason, Jason Seiler and I bowled in high school together and uh, dude could sing I remember he sang uh, everything I do from uh, that Brian, we did Robin Hood. Just watch the movie. You'll know oh, the song. Brian, right. Brian Adams? What? Uh, anyway. Sorry. Uh, real quick, uh, don't forget, next Saturday is our ministry uh, give-a-thon. Uh, I, don't nor I don't do well with asking for mm -hmm. assistance uh, in our ministry. I know as the founder and the director that I probably should. And after 11 years, you think I'd get better at it. But we really need your support this year. Tune in if you'd like to uh, sponsor a team and do your own little fundraiser for us. That would be great. Uh, or if you know a business that would be interested in sponsoring one of our half hours, uh, that would be amazing as well. Um, so join us. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on faithinreallife.com. And if you'd like to make a donation today... If you're feeling the Easter love and you want to become either a monthly donor or just make a one-time donation, you're supporting all of the programming and development that we're doing uh, to share the gospel message throughout the world. So um, you can go to faithinreallife.com to do that. Um, and we're grateful. So happy Easter from our family to yours. Anything that you want to say before uh, I leave? Uh, no, I'm just grateful. It's been really um, a, a blessing to get up every morning and journey with so many people who have come back and back and back, and it's um, it's been wonderful. So let's keep it up. Maybe not every day, but when is it again? Are you coming so back? So we'll go all week next week. Uh, Monday, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll do a rerun tomorrow. Honestly, Easter, we will. Easter Monday. Um, but, uh, yeah, I need to sleep in one day. But the, um, the show's going to run all next week, same time, 7.30 on the weekdays, 9 on the weekends. Okay. And then the week of the 20th, we will go to a regular schedule of twice during the weeks and then a gospel message on Sundays. Uh, you'll get sick of me anyway. I mean, we're at, like, this is almost like day 30. And uh, so 30 straight days, uh, something I didn't plan, but it sure has been uh, meaningful to me and to watch all of you grow as friends and and our own little family here it has been awesome. And if you're new, uh, welcome, because uh, we love that you're here and we love that you stumbled upon coffee and conversation. So um, God bless you. Have a great Easter. Take it for what it is. Um, don't forget that the beauty of Easter is not necessarily about uh, everything that today is going to bring about, um, but it exists because Christ gives us hope and God gives us everything that we need when we trust in him. So happy Easter. God bless. Yeah. We're cheersing you one more time. Uh, we should have done mimosas. 
But anyway, yeah. God bless you. Right. Take care. Happy Easter.